And it is my pleasure now to introduce Manhattan's great borough president and our wonderful friend, Gail Brewer. Thank you, Pam Elam. That was extraordinary. I can't think of three more deserving women to put on a pedestal in Central Park than Sojourner Truth, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and Susan B. Anthony. Without them, we would not have the right to vote. But we would not be here today without the hard work, and I mean hard work, of monumental women, sculptor Meredith Bergman, Council Member Helen Rosenthal, Parks Commissioner Mitchell Silver, Central Park Conservancy President Betsy Smith, and their whole Conservancy team. And we all, of course, owe a special debt of thanks to Pam Elan, the president of Monumental Women, and my friend since 1978. I also want to thank Colleen Jenkins, vice president of Monumental Women, as well as we know the great-great-granddaughter of Miss Stanton, I want to thank, yes, give her a round of applause. I also want to thank Penelope Cox, who's Director of Special Projects in the Office of Manhattan Borough President. And in the Mayor's Office, I want to express appreciation to Stacy Lynch and Allie Davis. I am so proud to have worked toward this accomplishment together. We're very honored in the audience today to have Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul, <laughs> Congress Member Carolyn Maloney, whom you heard before, but she's in person, and Commissioner Pauline Toole, who's head of the Municipal Archives, whom we love. I have been an elected official for an awfully long time, but getting this statute approved was a major challenge like none other. Seven years ago, hardly anyone was talking about statutes. And now, folks mostly talk about tearing them down. Whether we agree or not about the content of our monuments, they mark the historical disposition of the city's people, of its spirit, and the temper of the times. Much as in the era of suffragists we honor today, it was just about seven years ago that a few good women stepped forward to create history and in the form of this powerful sculpture, affirmed the leading role of women in our history and in the historical importance of New York to the character of our nation. When the struggle to create this sculpture began, the city of New York, as you heard earlier, had only five works of civic sculpture portraying real life women, Joan of Arc, Eleanor Roosevelt, Gertrude Stein, Golda Meir, and Harriet Tubman, and none were in Central Park. So we banded together, and in the spirit of Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Susan B. Anthony, and Sojourner Truth, and the thousands of women who risked their lives for suffrage, we set out to break the bronze ceiling. It wasn't easy. Stanton, Anthony, and Truth, must be smiling somewhere at the hoops the monumental women were made to jump through to create a statue honoring three of the most important figures in American history. The answer, no, came in many forms. The park is closed to new statues. Women don't want a statue, they want a garden. If we say yes to this statue, we'll have to say yes to any statue. And my personal favorite, you have to prove that each of these women had actually set foot in Central Park. <laughs> Funding was a challenge as it was for the suffragists. Only my office and that of city council member Helen Rosenthal put in public money. But there were generous, as you heard earlier from Pam, individual donations and foundation support that have provided the rest. A huge highlight of the money chase was hearing that local Girl Scout troops were donating the proceeds of their cookie fundraising 
toward completion of the statue, and they did even more. Well, it took 70 years to get the boat, but only seven to get the statue. And if you listen carefully, you can just hear Stanton's voice. Don't worry, ladies, we're getting there. In our own way, we too believed we were on the right side of history and sought to build a force to make change in the status quo. It's never easy. In the hundred years since suffrage passed, our franchise has in fact brought about what many in opposition feared. Our voices and their conviction have grown ever stronger through one struggle after another and our grip on the levers of power ever more sure. It is sobering to recall that the women figured here not only never saw themselves honored by works of civic art, none lived to see the 19th Amendment ratified in 1920. But they knew that voting was only a right worth fighting if we exercise it. We're coming up on a monumental election. Not only our rights, but our lives are at stake. We must motivate everyone to be touched by our voices, by our love, and a belief in a constitutional republic that every vote must count. As we have seen, change begins in the streets. But to be effective, it must lead to the voting booth. Yes. This year, that franchise, won for us by the smart, courageous women is once again our most important civil right. 